is Mark Stewart uh, from Camden County School. Today what I want to talk to you about is my perspective from the K-12 environment in the States because we like to do things the old way. And so once we learn how to do it 25 or 30 years ago, we never want to change. So this is a new way of thinking. It's a new technology. So why should you use Zine? And the floors can be stripped. We remove the embedded dirt without removing the floor finish. And strip is a is a different word right here because strip makes you think conventionally of using stripper and then going back and waxing it. But what what we're talking about here, uh, when you go over the floor with the product and the and the buffers, is it's actually stripping or ripping or bringing the dirt, the embedded dirt, out of the finish. The other thing it does is it saves time. I have a one custodian, I just asked him, he has an elementary school that's about 85,000 square feet. And I said, well, how long did it used to take you to strip and wax your floors? And he would say about 10 days, you know, during the summer. I said, well, how long does it take you to do this process, the zine process? He said about three days. So all of us know, and if you're involved with budget anyway, all of us know that time is money. You may, you may not be spending it on the product and all the stripper and wax, and I'll show you our savings in a few minutes. But every time that uh, in our um, position with uh, in K through 12, our custodians do a lot of other things besides uh, clean. And that's one of the unfortunate characteristics of K through 12 uh, cleaning. Uh, they do, uh, you know, they might. Uh, watch over our lunches, they may sell ice cream, they may do bus duty, they do a lot of things that um, they shouldn't be doing, but, it, but at the same time, I had to try to find a way to make it, them more efficient, and that was what my whole goal was. So it saves time, and time is money, and it also saves on material and cost. So at Camden County, we have almost 1.5 million square feet, 15 buildings, 9,300 uh, students, 67 custodians, and you can see uh, Charles came over and, and helped us do the hard surfaces, and uh, th those are the totals for our school. So, you know, we're kind of in the middle of the pack as far as school size are concerned in the uh, state of Georgia. We are 6A as far as uh, um, sports and athletics is concerned, and that's just based on the high school. But um, we're right in the middle of the school system as far as uh, sizes and the number of schools that we have. So what are our challenges? Most school systems have custodians as their employees um, and, and are not outsourced. A lot of school systems, that's the number one thing they're going through is outsourcing custodian, custodial services. But our biggest challenge is that principals usually control the custodians. So if they need to go do bus duty, they're doing bus duty. They're not cleaning. Well, we have one school I've complained about for 15 years that sell, has two custodians sell ice cream for three hours every day. Well, that's six hours a day that we're losing, that they're not cleaning. So we're not, we're not very efficient. That's the reason I've even encouraged Charles. Uh, schools can be um, good clients if they have somebody who supervises and can control the cleaning. And that's where hospitals and universities are much better because you know when, when people are hired to clean, that's what they do. They don't they don't multitask too many times. You may have some supervisors that might multitask, but not near as much as the challenge of a K through 12 environment. Uh, most principals don't have any method of evaluating their cleanliness. We've tried to help them with that the first couple of years. I offered about five or six years ago to our superintendent, let me have the custodian. But the, but the rule is they have to do what I tell them to do. The principal can't be pulling them and asking them to do all these other duties um, because I wasn't satisfied with how clean our schools are. We have relatively new schools. Our, we have one school that's 1982, one is 86, and then um, you know up until 2010. So we don't have really old schools. We don't have any 1920s and 30s schools that we've renovated. So we expect the inside to look just as nice as the outside. And most principals have no cleaning experience. I mean, I was a teacher and coach, and I, then I was a principal in elementary and middle school before I got into the central office, and um, I didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. I knew what clean was, and they didn't really, my custodian didn't really like that a whole lot because I knew the way my mama raised me, and I knew what clean was, 
And so I expected the building to be clean. I didn't want my kid to go to a school that was dirty, and nobody wants their children to do that. So you can see what the challenge, the K through 12 challenges are, what some of them. And so that's a real problem for us, and a real problem, a real challenge for me and Rooster and Charles to try to make sure that they are the custodians are doing what they're assigned to do. We put a lot of money into buying the proper equipment so that we can make them more efficient. And uh, you know, and still we have challenges because they're not exactly doing what they were hired to do 100% of the time. So why do I choose Zine? Charles will tell you that my secretary does a very good job of protecting me. And it took him about a year and a half or two years to get in to see me because, you know, you do get comfortable in the way that you're doing things. And since I didn't have control over the custodians, I did want them to feel somewhat comfortable in the products that they use. But one of the challenges we had is we had, you know, a hundred different products. So we did have a custodial supervisor at one time, and, and I had Mr. Roberts go around to all the schools, and we threw out all the old stuff that we weren't using. You know, we tried to get down to just four or five different products uh, that we were using throughout the system. So that was a challenge of ours. In Camden County, since 2008, we've lost at least 41% of our budget. We've gone from 69 million to 38 million. Now, that's a lot of money. 276 employees we've sent home. Um, we've, and of course, as everybody knows, anybody that manages the budget, the first place they're going to cut is in operations. I mean, because the teacher, we want teachers there to teach the kids and the support staff. So um, I had to save money. We reduced the custodial days, 20 days, and um, you know that was difficult. But we knew that it could happen because during the summer, a lot of times. You know, we didn't always see them working like they needed to be working. So it wasn't quite as hard to cut them 20 days, but, you know, maintenance got, every department got cut. You know, central office took eight days, principals took seven days, teachers took six days, maintenance got cut 14 days, transportation got cut 14 days, um, and, and then everybody in the system took uh, similar cuts. But then I also wanted a process. I was tired of us doing things the old way, going to one school and expecting to see one thing, and I'd have to expect to see something else in a different school. So we wanted to come up with one process, and since then, I wanted our schools to look outstanding, not just okay. And not everybody has the same, same, look, uh, same eye that I do. So this is St. Mary's Elementary. You can see it got an outstanding school design, American School and University Magazine. We opened that school in 2010. This is our cafeteria. This is in a historical district, so it may look a little overkill for an elementary, but it's a historical district. It's very important for it to fit into the community. Um, I can tell you that a section over near the far columns, uh, we, had, we hired a company to come in and um, to wax the floors, the terrazzo floors, and get it ready to open schools. And there's a section about a quarter of this, the inside of this larger section, that has eight coats of wax on it. And it was just as a couple of other pictures that we have. This is our art room, which we don't have art anymore. That was one of the positions we had to cut, but we already had the room. Again, no stripping. And this is VCT. You can see, uh, even without the outside lights, you can see the reflection of the lights in the classroom. And then this is St. Mary's Middle School, another outstanding school design, American School and University in 2007. And uh, this is about 161,000 square feet. It's all terrazzo in the classrooms and in the hallways. And um, so we put a lot of effort into it. Here are the terrazzo floors at the front. And again, you know, the floors haven't been stripped. This is a VCT again, uh, one of our schools that had Gerald always does a good job on the floors, but again, what he was able to do is cut his time in half, if not cut it by 60%. So that was that was very important for us. Crooked River Elementary. This is the second oldest school, and it's a terrazzo floor, the old terrazzo. Uh, the floor was probably put in in about 85. And uh, mm -hmm. as you can see, um, we, we came in we're able to use the process without stripping the floors. So we have, you know, we have VCT and we have uh, terrazzo, and 
um, so it's very important for us to find a product that works on both of those. These are just some of the uh, cost uh, reductions that we've had in Camden County Schools, and you can see each year, uh, every May, I would end up ordering wax and stripper for us to uh, resurface the floors, and you can see each year uh, what my cost did. Now, 2011 is when uh, Charles, we had already ordered, Charles came in the summer, and then we started using it. You can see what we did the next year in 2012. So we've been able to actually, you know, to have a significant reduction. And even though in my overall budget of about $4 million, that's not a lot of money for colleges and universities that are much larger than I am, they have 38 to 40 buildings, you can see how you can multiply those, those savings and uh, how they would be multiplied in your arena. But that, but that still is very significant for us because remember, not only did we save the money, but we also saved the time. And so the custodians had time to get to other projects that they might not ordinarily get to. Uh, so a, a lot of the head custodians who are very conscientious, uh, they were wisely used that time to get to other projects. And so why should you use the Zenium floor care system? It reduces labor up to 50% or more for floor care. Uh, it reduces material costs, eliminates floor stripping, saves time for your custodial staff, improves building appearance, which makes staff and customers happy. And if you don't think customer satisfaction is, is a high priority, you know, when you have your parents come in the building, that's customer satisfaction. The first thing they see are the floors, the last thing they see are the floors. The, and, and the doors and the windows. So you want those entrances to re look really good. And this is, you know, a non-slip product reduces accidents. I don't know uh, how the rest of you uh, find the products to work, but there was hardly ever a summer that would go by that we didn't have a couple of workers' comp claims because of stripper. I used to strip floors in college, and even once I started working for the school system, I went in and refinished gym floors, and me and a couple of other coaches. We stripped and waxed floors, and I can tell you, I was pretty nimble at 22 and 25. Uh, but once you grab that machine and turn the power on, it'll jerk you around pretty quick and you, you don't have a lot of stability standing on top of that stripper. But I can't tell you a worker's comp claim that we've had in the last couple of years by redoing the floor. Uh, but that's one of those costs uh, that we have to avoid for us, just in Camden County Schools. Uh, our uh, worker's comp premiums are almost $500,000 a year. That's just workers' comp pre insurance premiums. And that, that doesn't include all the other liability and property uh, insurance that we have to carry. So anything that we can reduce, do to reduce those costs um, helps us keep teachers in the classroom and helps us put more money into the classroom. And that's what our job is.